So throughout our course, we're going to learn a lot about money in a lot of different ways. I definitely have some of my personal experiences, but I've also pulled a bunch of different resources. One of the main resources we're going to use is Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. And Dave is a multimillionaire who goes around and he teaches people how to use money. Some of your parents may have taken his course. Some of your parents may listen to his radio show. But I want to let him give an introduction of his story and why you should care and listen to him. So here we go. Hey guys, I'm Dave Ramsey and I'm so excited you're taking this class. I promise you, this may be the most important class you ever take. I get letters every day from teachers and students across the country about the material in this course. Comments saying this has been the most fun class that they've ever taken. Or it's had the greatest impact on their life. And they love learning about this stuff. You know why? You know why they say this? I know why. Because you can apply it right now. You've probably wondered why you have to learn algebra or what the point of dissecting a frog is. And you think to yourself, when will I possibly use this stuff? Well, algebra and other classes are important and they certainly have their place. But when you understand money well, that affects everyone and everything. I don't care if you make $100 a week or $5,000 a week. You need to know about money and how to make it work for you. As you watch the videos, you'll be seeing adults in the audience. You know why? Because this is real life. You're going to have bills. You're going to pay for food and housing and have the responsibilities that adults have. And unless you have parents who are dying to have you live at home forever and pay for everything, you need to know such things as how to balance a checkbook, about buying insurance, all this kind of stuff. I love my kids to death, but I taught them all this stuff as they've grown up so that they'd know what to do when they move out. I don't want them hanging around forever. Did you know that 70% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck? They live without a plan and their money is in a mess. Money problems are the number one cause of divorce and the number one cause of male suicide. Many adults are struggling because they don't know how to handle their money. All of you watching this are getting ready to be on your own and you better be ready. This class is going to tell you the truth about credit cards, insurance, building serious wealth, investing, and many other money related things. If you pay attention to the things I'm going to teach you, then you won't end up in a situation where your money is in a mess and it's wrecking your life. My family and I have been following these principles for the past 20 years. During that time, I've raised three wonderful children who all had to learn the same financial principles that I'm going to teach you. In fact, you'll be seeing a lot more of my daughter, Rachel. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Ramsey and I'm here to tell you that you will use all of the things that we are going to teach you about money. I'm the middle child in the Ramsey family and I'm so glad dad taught me all this stuff. You won't believe the money trouble you can get into if you aren't aware of things like marketing and credit cards, even at college. Rachel's going to help me take you through the world of money so that you, as the next generation of Americans, can have some financial peace. Enjoy the class. When I was growing up, I grew up not rich. Most people grow up not rich. When I graduated from college, I met my wife Sharon, we got married, we started our lives broke. B-R-O-K-E broke. We were eating off a card table driving a 1902 Pinto. We ain't got money, honey, but we got love. And it was a good thing too, because we didn't have any money. But I started buying and selling real estate, and I got rich, at least by a kid from Antioch, Tennessee standards. By the time I was 26 years old, I ended up with about $4 million worth of real estate, a little over a million dollar net worth, and my, my best year ever in the real estate business, I made $250,000 that year. That's $20,000 a month. That was fun. You know, it was so fun because, well, with a little bit of money, you can buy some stuff. And I had always wanted a Jaguar. That was my car. You probably have a car you always wanted. Well, I always wanted a Jaguar. So I went and got me a Jaguar. It was fun. I mean, I drove it around about 90 days and then I was a Jaguar. Life was good on the planet, I'll tell you that. We were having a blast. We went to Hawaii and we liked it, so we went back. My wife Sharon, she likes those sparkly things and we got her some and they were big enough, so we got her some more. You know, sometimes I hear these people say, all those rich people are miserable. Uh-uh. 
<laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> we were having a blast. Life was good at the Ramsey house. But the bank that we were dealing with, we borrowed a bunch of money from them. And that bank, it got sold to another bank and the guys in another city suddenly were making all the decisions and they, well, they, they called our notes. And that's the short version of the story is we spent the next two and a half years of our life losing everything we owned. We were sued, we were foreclosed on, and finally with a brand new baby and a toddler, a marriage hanging on by a thread, we hit bottom, we were broke and bankrupt. Nothing left. Sold the Jaguar on a Thursday because the bank had promised me on Friday morning they were gonna repossess it if we didn't sell it first. Those were tough times. I learned a lot on the way up about money. And I learned a lot on the way down and at the bottom about money. You see, I've got a PhD in DUMB. I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I know what it's like to have money and I know what it's like to be broke. I've done both and I'll tell you, having money doesn't make you happy, but if you got a headache, you can certainly afford the aspirin. So it's a good idea to be managing money well. Well, that was 20 years ago that we were at the bottom and we had crashed and splatted and whatever you want to call it. And we started our lives over. And we started handling money the way we teach. So I want to teach you how to not go splat, but also how to make the decisions where you can be the tortoise. The one that goes a little slower, maybe is a little uglier, but every time I read the book, the tortoise beats the hare. Every time he wins the race. So don't do it the way I did it the first time. Do it the way I learned to do it the second time. Then you'll get to make a little bit of this and you'll get to keep a little bit of this. You're in for a ride. Hang on, it's gonna be worth it. So welcome to unit one in personal finance. The first thing I wanna briefly go over are the unit one learning targets and key terms. So at the end of this unit, we want you to be able to explain the difference between a commission and an allowance, describe the general differences between men and women as they relate to money, and that'll be one of the first things we go over, and identify the characteristics of a nerd and a free spirit and explain how they approach budgeting different ways, and then explain the importance of doing a budget together when married. And then down here, these key terms, these you're gonna see popping up throughout the notes. These are for sure the words that you wanna know what they mean. So just a brief look ahead, accountability, allowance, commission, fiscal, free spirit, nerd, and work ethic.